everybody and welcome. It is Wednesday. I'm Marcy Besker and I'm an independent demonstrator with Stamping Up and I appreciate you joining me today and I'm just making sure on my video and yours make sure you're on live chat because that keeps you current to what's going on in the moment and instead of top chat which is the people that are normally chatting up at the top of the chat. So welcome everybody. Whew. Today's been a fun day. Um, I kind of took the day off today. My husband last night, it, for those of you that watch, you know, I went to the casino a few weeks ago and I actually did okay. And, um, you know, you get a little card in the mail telling you you have credit. So my husband said, have you spent your credit yet? And I'm like, no, because I go like three times a year usually. Um, play the penny machines or play bingo with my friend. It's just something we do for her birthday, my birthday, and then in the middle of the year. And um, But they opened a new casino. We thought we'd go check it out. It's very, very nice. No smoking, no drinking, so it's really nice. And anyway, so I had some credit, and I said, you know what, yeah, I, I, I will go spend their money because they give you, you know, little vouchers or whatever. So I went today and kind of just went by myself and my, my friend that goes with me had to work. And so I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go and walk around and play a little bit. And I did okay for a while. And then, you know, bye bye. I always said they should have a drive through that you could just drive through and just give them your money and come back home. <laughs> but it was fun. I had a good time. I um, talked to this lady who was winning like crazy. But anyway, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we, as in me and everybody that was there. Um, so it, it was fun. It was relaxing. I just got back home, got everything ready really quick. And so, um, yeah, Deborah, it was. I like the penny slots. I like to people watch. Um, I really like that there's no smoking there. So it's I could breathe the fresh air and enjoy myself. And um, I just play the pennies and it's fun. So that's what I did today. So um, I was super excited about that. Hi, Debbie. How are you? Deborah, Lisa, Mary, Leslie, Patty, Kathy, Debbie, Marsha. Hello, everybody. And I know there were some above I didn't I didn't see. Um, but thank you. Don't forget, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. It helps my YouTube channel a lot. And um, I would really appreciate that. Oh, you too, Debbie. I'm so glad you're doing okay. Oh, Leslie, I am feeling so much better. Um, so for those of you that maybe, um, don't follow me, I had COVID eh, while I was traveling to Montana and, um, anyway, much better. My energy's back. I still have a little bit of a cold, but nothing terrible. Um, oh, me too. Oh, quarter slots. Mm. Well, I, my husband laughs cause he's like, oh, you only play the pennies. Well, you know, he goes and plays 20 bucks and he's done. And um, I'm like, as long as I got money in there, <laughs> I have fun. I, I enjoy it. And um, But you can still pay, play 5 and $10 a, a, you know, a slot. Today there was one that I was on. It was the Buffalo, one of my favorites. And it was $10 for one hit. I was like, for, for Max. And I was like, yeah, too rich for my blood. Hi, Lisa. Welcome. Where are you from? I appreciate you watching. Um, so anyway, that was a lot of fun today. I had a good time. It was kind of nice to get out. I've been working on my swaps um, for on stage. Who is going to on stage? I'm super excited about it. So um, it's in November. If you are a demonstrator or would like to become a demonstrator, on stage is local. Um, it's in Vienna um, right now this time, but you have local ones. You're going, oh, you're from New Hampshire. Very nice, Lisa. Well, welcome. Uh, so I'm going to Anaheim. Of course, it's only a few hours from me. So my downline and I, one of my downlines, uh, we are traveling to Anaheim. So we're excited. It's her first event. So I'm super excited to introduce her to all that. I haven't been to one um, since it was in Utah and it was convention. Everybody was together and I loved it. It's, oh, if you haven't been to an event, it's Price Patrol. It's the excitement. It's everybody being together. I am super excited about it. So I've been working on swaps like crazy. Okay, so that being said, I have a lot of things to share really quick before we get going. 
Um, I shared a lot the other day, but one of the things I want to tell you about is starting at 11 o'clock tonight, California time, um, the 24 hour stamp sale. Mark your calendars. It starts tonight at 11 o'clock for me and going through all day tomorrow. So no matter where you're at, the 15th, it is going to be a stamp sale. Now, let me explain something about the stamp sale to you. If you look at a bundle, if you're looking for a bundle, buy the bundle. Do not buy the stamp set for 15% off and then you're gonna be playing regular price for the dies, okay? So if you want a bundle, buy the bundle. If you want a stamp set that doesn't have the dies or maybe you have the dies already, that's where you're gonna get the 15% off the stamps. Everything in the main catalog except the host set. So even though it says select sets, I don't know why they put that on the um, flyer. It's everything in the main catalog which is the annual big catalog. Um, so remember, bundles, buy them as bundles, you'll save more money. And then stamp sets that maybe you want that don't have a die or isn't a bundle, okay? Because some stamp sets come that aren't new, like if they were a bundle in the last catalog, they're not a bundle in this catalog, right? So you're gonna buy the stamp set and the die separate. You, then you want to buy that stamp set as um, you know, get your 15% off. Oh, Debbie, that, I understand. That's how my um, leaders thing was this year for in New Orleans. I couldn't go because we ex had our grandbaby. So, and then, oh yeah, I got COVID. So we did that instead. Um, Lisa, I get it. It's expensive. It's close to me. So I'm really lucky that it's not too far away. And I had a free event that I got to use. So um, the hotel is pretty much what I'm paying for. But anyway, um, so that is um, something you don't want to forget. The other things really quickly is um, the weekly deals. This is starting tomorrow. Um, this is going to be the weekly deals. Now, as a demonstrator, we got to listen to a couple things in leaders. Now, to explain a little bit about why you might go on and see multiple things like last week's items, which is today, and then tomorrow's items together. The way they post the weekly deals, it's across the board, no matter where, what country you're in, okay? So North America, what happens is we're gonna see tomorrow's deals today still posted with last week's deals, okay? Because in other countries it's already tomorrow so that's why we see it both now when they see theirs today on the inside they'll you know at the beginning they're gonna see the end and the beginning it's so it just depends on the days there's like a day that they get both towards the end of this one and then they'll start seeing next one you see what I mean it's kind of kind of weird it's about the day that it's it but it's also um, going to be the, um, you're going to get two of them, two weeks on one day is kind of what, what, what that happens. Um, prior commitment. Yeah, but I'm so close to Anaheim. Oh, Debbie, that's too bad. Well, maybe something will change. Somebody will change their birthday or whatever it is. Um, next time, hopefully we'll meet you next time. Um, thank you, Virginia. I appreciate that. So anyway, those are the couple things. Other than that, it's the same, you know, stuff. I have a new host code. Um, there's a new paper pumpkin that is super exciting. And it looks like the stamps will go with the following paper pumpkin. So the next two kind of go together, which is nice. Bingo, don't forget, October 12th. It's a Wednesday. It's at 5 o'clock. So my normal videos are at 5.30. Bingo's last a lot longer. So I'm starting it a little bit earlier. Uh, but still trying to get the West Coast people to get off work and have a little time to get home. So um, there's a link below. It's also my birthday month, so I'm going to do some extra giveaways. We're going to have a lot of fun. I have three projects created so far. One is going to be a fancy fold, and it will be a Christmas card. And then I have two other ones. I will 
by Friday, I will link everything on my Facebook page, Marcy Bessaker Designs, and I will post what the um, stamp sets are I use. I should have my fourth one done. Today's Wednesday. Well, let's say by Sunday, um, I'll have my last card created. So uh, that will be done. It's a little earlier in October because I'm going to be gone at a retreat towards the end of the month. So um, that's why I'm trying to get everything kind of done ahead of time. So hi, Perry. How are you? Okay, so today we're going to do this card. I was asked to um, work with the Perched in a Tree. Yes, Perched in the Tree with the Aspen Dyes. And so um, that's what I decided to work with. And when I saw this paper... I've used a lot of the Lights of Glow paper, and this is one of the papers I had left over, and my immediate thought was Halloween. So a night sky with Halloween. So don't be surprised if you see that coming in a night sky Halloween card. But I thought, how fun would that be in the background here? And I'm just kind of making this a night um, card. And I'm going to show you how I created this and how we came up with it and um, when it's close up and you're holding it you can really see that background but I wanted it to have like a glow with the trees which is why I made them blue but um, because it's nighttime but this branch is because you can see the bird and the leaves it's a little closer like if there's a light on it so I hope that kind of makes sense um, so these are white like this is so I just use crumb cake So I did a couple things ahead of time and I'll explain it as I go because I kind of had to I don't want to forget my wink of Stella. So I'm going to set that aside right now. So um, Let's get busy So what I have is Knight of Navy For my card base. We're not going to worry about the inside. There's a lot to do on the outside um, the inside I would put a white piece of paper and then I would probably just take this and put it at the bottom. <coughs> you could also flick your little snow or whatever you want on that. Okay, so let me show you exactly what I did. And then I have some that is dried already so I can kind of show you. So I'm going to set this aside. We're going to take a four by five and a quarter piece of basic white right here. All right, and then what I'm going to do is we are going to die cut it first. So we're going to use our die here. And so this is four by five and a quarter, and it just gives you enough on the outside to keep the frame of your card. And then you're going to uh, be able to die cut this out. So let me just, I'm going to do this off the camera right here as soon as I move the machine a little closer to me. Just quickly kind of center it. And we're going to die cut this. All right, so here we go. It cuts so nicely, look at that. And then what I normally do is take a piece of paper that I just have sitting around here and I just kind of do that, get all the pieces off. All right, there we go. So we'll move this aside for now. What's really nice about this is you have that piece, you have your branch, your bird, two leaves, the small one and the large one, and then this is like a cluster of flowers. I had some, but I decided not to use them. I should have kept them so I could show them to you, but I didn't. All right, so we'll just poke these little pieces out. I like to die cut it first because I want to get my color in the little grooves and all the little images. <coughs> Excuse me, let me get a drink. Hi, Tashana. How are you? Hi, Dana. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to try and put this in here and try and keep my base kind of clean. I'm going to be using Night of Navy, Smoky Slate, Basic Gray, and of course our Memento Black. So let's start with Night of Navy. 
And the other thing I think I forgot to write down is you want to use your Whisper White um, reinker. I'm gonna bring this closer to you so you can see it a little bit better. I'll move this over. And I'm gonna take my blue blending brush. Okay, I'm gonna get it inky. And then I like to start off the side and just come on the corner and I want it kind of dark on the outside. I don't want it very dark on the inside, but do you see how it's catching the blue around the edges? And I like that. If you were to do it before you die cut it, it would just look um, flat. And this gives it a little more dimension, which I really like. And we're gonna go darker around the outside, but I wanna get, once I went on the outside a little bit and got some of the ink away, now I'm going to come through and just kind of go on the inside. And then we're going to come back over on the edges and come back. I want to go across this way, this way, kind of go every way so you can make sure you get everything in that little um, groove. Oh, Deborah, that's nothing. I just started these plates yesterday. This, these plates are started yesterday. They were brand new. Um, I'm, like I said, working on my on my swaps. There's a lot of dies, so the, I've been die cutting like crazy. Okay, so I think that's enough for the inside. So now let's just get the outsides done. I made sure that I washed my hands really good. I even put um, hand sanitizer on them because you don't want to get your fingerprints and stuff all over on the outside. You could also um, do something like this and you know turn your paper over and hold it you know whatever works for you um, just remember that this is kind of delicate and so you want to make sure especially these right here you don't go like this too hard okay and so we're going to kind of darken up this outside I always like to keep my finger there just to you know this isn't very thick I don't want it to break Just kind of get it going to where the color that you want. We're going to add black to it so you don't have to go too crazy. But I do want to add some darker blue on the outside. It just helps the black look more like a midnight blue and not like so black. All right, so that is a lot of blue. I think we're good. Again, you can tell that the middle is a little lighter, which is what I want. Okay, so let's stop that for our blue. Um, we're going to still use our blue in just a minute, so we'll just set this aside for right now. And now I'm going to bring in the black. I'm going to switch my brush. I do not have a brush for every color. Um, so this is for grays and blacks. And, you know, I haven't cleaned it off, but look, there's not a whole lot coming off of it. But I, if I took a paper towel because it has a little bit of you know tooth to it some texture and you could um, wipe it off and then you pretty much don't have anything left on here but we're gonna pick up our black and we're just gonna come around now if I were going with a different color a lighter color you would want to be careful with what's ever on your paper but this is a dark color so I'm not too worried about it and I'm just gonna go around the edges. I don't want this on the trees. The edges are okay of the trees, like up here is okay. You just don't wanna get it on the middle of your tree. All right, so just kinda of go, make sure you got it all around your edges. You wanna darken this seam. Okay, and be careful picking up your going on your edges you don't want this to bend or rip I know a lot of people just keep going and going and you could do that but um, I tend to just keep picking up ink it's faster <laughs> there's certain things like when I do the bird then that's where your patients are going to come in is when you're trying to color and get a certain look 
and you're going to have ink all over your hands so make sure you have your baby wipes nearby so you can clean your hand and so we're just creating this scene and i'm just going in circular motions and you can just keep going as dark as you want and get it to get that look like there's a big dark spot right there. So I'm going to come up here and kind of come down towards there and blend that a little bit better. And you can just keep going until you get the look you're looking for. Okay, so we're just going to stop there. I have another one ready, but I want to show you how I got the effect and everything that I did. So we'll just, this is good enough for now. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your white reinker, and I use my um, silicone mat. I'm going to take this off. I'm just going to turn it over and we're going to use this because we're going to set this aside when we're done. Let me get a baby wipe and wipe my fingers the best you can. Okay, now you don't want to take your wet hands and put them on there, so just set your, I usually have a tissue or a towel near me like this, and then I just kind of make sure I dry my hands, all right? And now, they're nice and dry, we're going to put that there. I have a little spray bottle, if I can find it, that has water in it, so I just add some move your card i just add some water and then i add until i use this a lot okay let it go and then i have a little brush this one here and i use it kind of squeeze it get whatever however much out you need Oh, Nancy Lee, no worries. We're just kind of getting going. All right, now I'm going to take my brush, and you can also use, you know, any of our brushes that we have, like any of these that you want. I tend to just use a little brush, and I put a little bit of water with it, and I, I absorbed all the water, which is a little too much, I think, but that's okay. Just, I'm just giving you the idea. And then flick around. Now, the one thing about this not drying ahead of time, because I like to make sure my paper's really dry before I do this, because the white will kind of pick up the color. And what I'm basically doing is just adding snow to the back of my card. You want to make sure it's on your trees. It looks like it's snowing in front. Okay, so now we're just going to set this aside. I like to see I used way too much white, but that's okay because I forgot. Normally, I would also do this, but I don't think I need to show you again. See, I added some white here too. And now I would just set this aside. You could always, you know, fold this, whatever you need to do, and then just set it aside so it'll dry. I like to dry mine overnight, but you could also use your, um, your heat tool. Okay, and then what I do with this is I just kind of put that there. I'm going to take my water bottle, since I'm not going to the bathroom sink to wipe my stuff off, and I'm just going to do this for right now. And make sure you try to get off as much as you can, and we'll wash that up after. And see, I wasted a lot of this, but I wasn't thinking that I didn't have that other thing to do too. So you don't have to use that much. But it's re right? It's fine. So we'll move this, let that dry, and now I have these pieces already dry. I did these yesterday, and I even added a little bit of white on here to go on the inside. So you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I thought it would be kind of fun to add it together. So now let's, we can go ahead and put these together, and this is where all your little scrap pieces come in handy. 
Okay, so what I did is take your mean ones, put them on the corners, okay? And then I took some small ones. Ooh, I think my husband turned the air off or down. Put them on the larger pieces where you can. And I want them like right here and right here, wherever you can get them on the top and the bottom. You want that tree to stand up as much as you can. So I'm gonna put it right here in the middle because you want it to be a nice, um, not sunk in by adding things to the top of it. All right, so we're gonna put one right there. So we have there, there. Mm, that's kind of skinny. We'll add this one here. I'm going to add this one here. So just kind of add them where you can, but then you can add your scraps pieces. And look, I'm actually, the little ones are kind of working pretty well right here. Um, you can cut these up, and I do even little strips like this. Okay, and then bring in, I take off the strip on one side. And then I cut them like this. I grab my little piercing tool or your take pick, whatever you have, and I add that. And then I'm going to add another little piece right up here on that branch. And I'm going to add another one over on that branch, just a little piece. So you just want to make sure that all your pieces kind of stick up the best they can and hold their shape. And then I'm going to add one on the bottom right there. Did I go out? No. And then I'm going to add this one up here. Okay, so now... Now I'm going to pull them all off and layer those up. All right. Can you guys believe summer is almost over? I cannot believe that. I saw somebody post the other day like, oh, summer's almost over. And I'm like, it's barely the beginning of September. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess so. All right. Now, what I did is this one's four by five and a quarter. This one is just a smidge under because I want to make sure that this goes over it. So I'm just going to barely go over it and then kind of hold it up and you can wiggle the top part and just make sure that you don't see any of those stars around the outside okay so now you can kind of see your tree is all lifted up and actually i probably could have used the black um, dimensionals but you can't really see them unless you completely turn sideways but the black ones would have been a better a better choice i'm going to quickly wipe that off because I have I could look at my hands I've got white I'm picking up white flax okay this can go on the card but we can do that last so we're just going to move that over now we're going to bring in our a white piece of paper we're going to bring in our blue and we don't I don't think we have to re-ink it let's just see we're just going to kind of move this around okay and that's it for right now I'm gonna die cut out three leaves. So we're gonna do three leaves. This branch right here, I already did a branch because I wanted the snow to dry, but I'm gonna show you how I did the other one. Um, and we're gonna add snow to our larger piece in a minute. Okay, so let me cut these out. I need three, so let me just get those cut out. I did a little bit of blue.
but we're going to do more. So there's one. And now this one, before I cut the third one, because this has veins in it, okay, I'm going to stamp on here first. I'm going to do a little bit more blue over here. And then what I did is I took my stamp and I took this one here with the speckles. Oh, good, Denise. I'm glad. All right, so I'm going to take the speckled one. I leave my rubber in here until they're all done. They're not all done yet. Uh, sometimes I do the whole thing at one time. Other times I don't. So there's no really rhyme or reason. So here what I did is just because I wanted the leaves to look a little bit different is I'm going to take some smoky slate. And I'm just going to stamp like that. And then I'm going to do the darker color, basic gray. And I'm just going to add a little bit more texture. And you just want to make sure it's large enough to add your leaf. And since this is a pretty good size stamp, I love any kind of grunge or anything. Hey, Kelly, how are you? Hi, Rosemary, how are you? Okay, so we're going to die cut this out. So now we've got the indention from the die. Let me bring my piercing tool to grab it. And I pushed my die a little bit too close to the front, so that's okay. I'm going to lay this back here. See how the tip is white? I just want to add a little bit of blue. And see how now it's going around the edges? I want to just add the edges. I don't really want any on the inside like I did this one, but now we're going to add a little bit more so you can see the veins a little bit more. Okay, make them a little darker. So, and then plus you're getting the outside edges and adding a little bit of color. Okay, so there we go. So there's our leaves. All right, now for our bird. Now coloring the bird is, here's, here's our little cute bird right here. I stamped him a couple times and I also stamped the sentiment. So while I have this here, I'm gonna take my Knight of Navy and I'm gonna stamp off three times, two times, one, two, and then I'm just gonna add that, just like that, to add just a little bit of texture behind the words there. Thanks, Brenda. Is there a stamp set that goes with the aspen tree dice? Um, yes, Debbie, this one right here. So if you got the aspen tree dies as one of your celebration items, then make sure you get this and tomorrow it's 15% off. So uh, perched in a tree is the stamp set that you want. Hi Brenda, how are you? I thought I ordered. Oh, it's still available, Deborah. All right, so here we go. And then I'll show you how I did the sentiment in a minute. So we'll set that aside and let's start with the bird. Now. When I color stuff like this, I tend to stamp multiple because you know how coloring can go with your blends. Sometimes you're mixing colors and you're just not quite sure. I love browns and oranges like this, like rustic colors with blue. 
So I chose to do that. And if you look at the bird, he looks like he's got a little bit of texture. He's just not one solid color. Okay, so I will show you how to, um, what I did with that. So what we're gonna do is start off first. I'm gonna read you all the colors because I'm hoping, I don't know if I added them all on the list to be honest. I was trying to go by memory. Light and dark Cajun craze. I did light and dark of the um, petal pink. I did light and dark soft suede. I did light, oh, petal pink again because mine was, well, let's see, petal pink. I think this is the one that's dying. Um, I did a light basic black. I did gray granite, um, light and dark, and I did light um, smoky slate. Okay, so those are the colors that I used um, so far. So we're gonna start out with our dark Cajun craze, and for the most part, I used the bullet tip. And I'm just gonna zigzag on these darker, these lines here, and I'm just zigzagging. Okay, so just kind of like where the artist created some design there is where we're gonna put that. So, and then I did a little bit of shading up here, just a little bit, and I just kind of zigzag right there. And I think that's all I did for the shading because it's really not that much. Now you can take your brush tip because you've got a pretty big area, and I just went back and forth with the light Cajun craze. All right, so just kind of, and it doesn't have to be a straight line. I, I kind of make it zigzaggy so it just looks a little more natural. And then we're just gonna fill this in first. And then I'm gonna show you kind of what I do to make it look like a little texture. So right now you're just kind of blending those darker spots by going back and forth. I don't like to go over them too much. We're going to go back over them with the dark anyway. Okay, so there's that. So now let's take the light again, or excuse me, the dark, and let's just reapply our dark zigzags. There is a lot of color. Uh, perched in a tree is on sale tomorrow. It's in the mini. Oh, you're right, Dana. Thank you. Yes, if it if the stamp set is in the mini catalog, it is not on sale. Only the large annual catalog. Thank you, Dana. Um, you know, it's funny. The annual catalog and the holiday catalogs came out so quick, you know, close together that it's kind of hard to remember what's in what. Okay, so now I'm going to take the dark. And I'm just lightly going to hold it, and I'm just going to do little dots. Just little dots all over. Try and You'll see where you've been and where you haven't been. It doesn't have to be exact because you can go back in with your light. You can add more dark. You can do what you want. Okay, so we're just going to add little dots all over. So see already the difference in the look? So just keep going. And just add you know look at it and see what looks good to you okay now what I did and this is no rhyme or reason I just kind of go through and kind of just blend stuff so this is actually light oh this is what we did hold on dark light pale pink this is pumpkin so I'm gonna set that aside for now I'm gonna go with the dark petal pink and I'm gonna lighten the Cajun craze up a little bit and then add just another tone in here. Okay, so we're adding another tone. It's going to lighten it up a little bit. And you're going to add a little bit of this pale. This one's on its last leg too. It's got a lot used already. I'm going to press hard on it because there's hardly anything left in this one. All right, so we're going to do that. Now I'm going to take the pumpkin and come back in. 
add another little bit of a brighter color. And if it's loose in your hand, it's kind of dropping to the paper. You can also do like little flicks. You know, you could just do like that if you wanted to add, you know, more of a feathery kind of look, you could do that too. Uh, but you know, you can see little speckles on birds. And so this is what I'm gonna do. And I like to add some different colors in like that by doing this. Okay, so now you can tell the different colors I've used, but it doesn't just look like one color, right? All right, now I'm gonna try and do a lighter color. Let's try and see if it even shows up. Sometimes you know how when you use a lighter color, it blends a little bit. And if you do it, and you can even leave them down a little longer, and it'll, you know how the light color kind of spreads the darker color, and it just gives you a little bit of a light tint. You can probably see it much better in person than you can on camera, but this should give you an idea. All right, so I'm good with the belly like it is. So the dark, what I did with that is I did the beak. So all I did is kind of went where the lines are and made that the beak. And, and then I did the feet. So I just kind of colored those in like that. All right, now let's move to the browns and grays. I'm gonna pull in the light and dark petal pink again. Oh, wait a minute, this is pumpkin. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, so now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my dark soft suede and do the same thing as before. And I'm gonna do just little squiggles. And I'm gonna do dots on the head because you can see that there's just little tiny lines right there and squiggle. And it doesn't have to be, you know, you could use your darker or your brown or grays, whatever colors you, you know, want to do on your bird. Okay. And then I'm going to do squiggle all the way around here and just squiggle. So I'm just kind of squiggling a little bit there and I'm going to do the tail. Because you're going to blend that out a little bit with the lighter colors. So don't worry about adding some dark there. Okay, again, I am no professional. This is just kind of what I like to do. Now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use the, um, the uh, bullet tip. And I just, remember I like to go towards the bird. I don't want it to fan back out. So right here, you don't really have a choice. And then I'm just gonna fan my colors inward so they don't bleed outward. And again, we're gonna do dots on it. So let's just color it in first, get everything. And again, this is the light soft suede. And I don't wanna keep going over too much in one area. So just kinda make sure you fill it in and move on. Cause otherwise it'll get really dark and I don't want that. All right, up here I'm gonna just do circular motions because I've got all those little dots right here and I kinda want those to blend a little bit. And I'm gonna come right where the nose is. The eye, you're gonna see where the hair is around the eye and you want the inner part of the eye, oh sorry, my head's in the way. You want the inner part of the eye to stay white. Okay, so I'm gonna go around that and kinda jaggedy because you don't need it to be perfect circle because you want it to look like feathers, right? All right, so we're gonna go around up here. I'm gonna turn it because I, I don't wanna, I wanna make sure I can see that I'm not going over that eye. And then just kind of blend that a little bit. Okay, and now here around the outside, I'm gonna do circular motions again because I just wanna get that dark to soften a little bit where I put that dark spot, keep turning your paper. Okay, 
Okay, so that'll blend in. Okay, now I'm just gonna, and you don't have to worry about your lines or anything because we're gonna do our little dot technique again. Okay, so right here, before I continue underneath, I'm going to add some dark um, petal pink. Let's see if I've got any left in here. Okay, I'm going to use the light. I'm going to use this one. The light. Just a little bit. And I'm going to feather this back a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to continue on with my light uh, soft spray. So this was light paper pump or paper pumpkin, uh, pumpkin pie. And now I'm going back to the light uh, soft suede. And we're just going to color this in and just blend that pumpkin in there because we're just going to add a little bit of a highlight color there. So there's our color and now we're going to, I'm going to go back to the dark soft suede and do our little polka dots. All right, so here we go. Just start it, let it just kind of fall. We're going to blend it in like we did the bottom. So don't worry if you think, oh no, those are way too dark. I don't put too many on the tail. They tend to, and then be careful when you go close to the edge. So just kind of let it drop. You know, when you go close to the edge, be careful. And I did just a little on his head, a little down his nose, not a whole lot. Okay, so I think that's good with the dark. Go back in with your light. And then really, you're just going to keep going until you get the look you want. So we're going to add the dark and the light, and I'm going to do a little bit of the pumpkin pie. You want to make sure you go to the edge, because you want to make sure the bird looks like he's rounded, like he's got another side and he's not flat. All right, we're going to do light down here. And anywhere you think just kind of looks all right <clears throat> and now I'm going to take the pumpkin pie which is the light again we're gonna add a little bit of an orange tint he's got to blend right he's got to be a coordinating bird have I ever seen a bird like this? Mm -hmm. Probably not. I'm just kind of making them colors I think that would look good with blue. I don't see blue leaves very often either, but I thought it was kind of a fun. Like I said, you could feather and just keep adding, you know, little feathers in with different colors. You could definitely do that too. This is just a technique I learned a long, long time ago and I liked it because it's just different. And it makes it look like it's a little more, oh, and my head's in the way again. Sorry, you guys. See how I'm getting all into this. All right. Now to blend it, I'm going to take my light. Um, do I have any in here? Yeah. Not much. Oh, better. So I'm going to use the thicker end and I'm just going to blend it a little bit. Number one, it'll lighten it up a little bit and it'll just soften the dots a little. You don't want to do it a whole lot, but I like to just kind of blend all the dots a little bit. And you can use whatever color you want. Um, you can even use the color lifter. It tends to pick up way more color than I want, so I don't usually use that color. Okay, so you don't need a whole lot of it. So there's our bird. So he just looks a little speckly, like he's got a lot of little different colors. 
Okay, so make sure you leave that white though for his eye. So there's that. So let's cut him out. And when I do all this coloring and then I have to cut them out, I definitely take a piece of my uh, double-sided, or not double-sided, my uh, removable scotch tape is my best thing. I don't really like using masking tape or um, washi tape because sometimes it picks up color, it picks up the paper, and I just want to make sure that, now I'm not really pushing on the inside, I'm pushing on the outside and the frame. So we'll cut him out. There's our bird. See, look, we didn't have to use that one, but it's there in case we need it. But sometimes, you know, when I first started a, a, like the bird and I'm doing it and then I'm like, oh, that color looks terrible. <laughs> and uh, so then I switched it up because I was kind of going to do gray and then I was like, no, I like browns with the blue. So I changed it. All right. So now we're going to bring our panel back in here. We are going to go ahead and add it to our card base now because everything's layered up. I'm not doing ribbons or anything like that. You guys and your Spice Girls. My fluffy Robin. Okay. So let's just add this to the card base. Because I'm going to have a lot of stuff in the middle, I just like to run an extra little thing there. And this dried overnight, but you could use your heat tool. Um, I did use my heat tool last night on my... Oh, okay. I forgot something, so let me share with you really quick. And it's okay, we're going to fix it anyway. Um, you see how I laid it down lightly because I need to move it to the left a tad. Um, normally, I do the snow on here before I adhere it to the back. But we're going to do it like this. I did it on some of this anyway, and it'll be fine because snow falls behind. So let's do that now before we forget. So this is our Snowfall Accent Puff Paint. All right, so what I did, there's a couple of tips for this. Number one, our new tweezers are the best things ever. Take another piece of paper, which I really don't need to do, but I'm going to show you what I did. I curled a piece of paper, I put it underneath this top layer so that it will be like, okay, two things to show you. See how this is picking up the blue already? I let my color dry a little before I added the snow so it looks a little more white, but it's okay. It's dark. But see how it holds this up? When you're heating it, it's going to push your paper, okay? But two things, number one, it's going to keep it kind of to where it's not like this, because if it was just like this, it would bend like this, and it, it's a little harder to dry when you're doing that, especially if you're doing the snow. So you can take your tweezers like that, and you've got this support here, number one. Number two, you can put it on here, and if it falls through or kind of goes in the back, it's okay. It's going to stick. You just pull it away. It's not a big deal. So if you were to do your snow, this is what I would recommend. It gives it a little more support, and it also doesn't bend it backward, okay? So that's one of the, the clues I have. This is already on here because I made a mistake, but that's okay. So what we're going to do is I have my heat tool right here ready to go. We're going to take this off. Okay, another thing about the heat tool, one of the things I learned is you don't put your heat tool down like this when you're using it a lot. I used to have, you know those um, things that clip on the desk that you put your drink in? I can't think of the name of it. It's got the little trash can and the whole bit. I can't not remember the name of it. But I had that, and I used to just put my heat tool in it. Well, if, you, if you're using it, and you put it down, and you're using it, and you put it down, and it stays hot, there's an element inside it doesn't stay, it doesn't cool off enough. It, they need you, to, you need to lay it down, which is, of course, the whole purpose of this. Um, so don't 
put it down if you think, oh no, my heat tool's not working. It's a safety mechanism, so be careful of that. Oh, Donna, you'll have to go watch from the beginning. There's a lot of good stuff here. Okay, so now we're gonna take it. I do a little at a time because I don't want it to run all over, especially, hopefully this doesn't become a disaster because I'm doing it after the fact. But you wanna put it on the front because if you put it along the ledges, when, you, when you're hitting it with your heat tool, it blows it up a little bit. So we're gonna start it right here and I'm gonna make it about that thick. One of the things you wanna know is you, it will turn blue um, if you don't put enough on there and if you, um, if it doesn't heat up, fast enough you're, that's why you want to do a little bit at a time because it will pick up the blue which is okay you can add a little more white to the top of it so don't worry about that let's see if I can you can see it so you're going to heat it up and you're going to see it start to puff up you want to keep moving your tool you don't want it to be in one spot because you don't want your snow to turn brown okay so that's that so there you go there's a little bit of snow so now we're going to go on top of the tree. So think about the tree. It's going to be sitting on top of the ledge. I'm going to put some right there. Come back in. But if this was just the frame, you can tell that it would be really, you know, thin and bend. And that's where you're going to come in with your tweezers and that piece of paper behind. It's going to make it a lot easier. Okay, and because we're doing it so quickly, it's not picking up all the blue, which is really nice. If you let it lay and you do too many at a time, then that's when you're going to notice um, all of your, the blue is going to show through. So I'm just going to do a little bit on these pieces here. Because we're going to have the bird kind of going over that anyway, so. But I don't want a whole a whole tree trunk there without any snow on it so we'll just add a little bit more hopefully you can whew. all right so that's getting a little hot okay so that one little piece is turning a little bit blue but we'll fix it So isn't that neat how it just puffs it up? So this little part right here is blue. And even though I think the branch is going to go over it, I'm just going to add a little bit more. Debbie, your cards are gorgeous. You've sent me several and they're absolutely beautiful. I showed the last one on the last video. All right, so that's going to get all puffy. So just kind of keep going wherever you think. So we'll put some right here. I like to put enough because you don't want it to be, um, to show up blue. If you put quite a bit, it's going to puff up and it'll look really good. And like I said, if it turns the color, whatever color you're using underneath, you can always add just a little bit more. Oh, I'm going to move over. If I get out of screen, you guys just have to tell me. All right. So a lot of birds going to go over here, but... And I did add a lot of it on my other card, but I'm going to add a little bit there because it's blue. There's a lot in that bottle, too. And see how that just moved? That's okay. It's all going to just puff up. See how cute that is? It just looks like a snowy day. 
Yeah, Donna, I'm not too worried about it, especially down here where the bird and stuff's going to go. That's a little blue right there, but yeah, it's it was funny because I first colored the branch with um, the soft suede, and when I did it, it looked like dirty snow on the branch, and I was like, yeah, that's not going to work, and then I realized, oh, wait, I'm making these look white with the, you know, the blue, the dark skylight on it, so I really don't need to have those color those brown so that's why I left it white I see that looks really blue but the the um, the birds gonna go over this so I'm not gonna worry too much except I'll put a little bit like right here just in case and then we'll go to the bottom and I put quite a bit because of course it all ends up on the ground right and now my my tool is heating up so it's heating things up just a little faster. And you can just kind of go up and down however to start drying it and then moving it around a little bit. This one's a little too, although the sentiment's going to be over that anyway. And it's a little heavy down here, and that's okay. Just at the bottom. Now, you have to be careful because this could slide back behind the top panel a little bit. You want to make sure it's dry or it's going to squish everywhere. Like I said, I would normally do this before I adhered it, so it's really not that big of a deal because it's snow and it's, you know, all over and that's okay. You can see where it starts puffing and that's where you want to hold your tool. Once it starts puffing, you're like, oh, that's where it's at. We're almost done with the snow. And like, it, it is snow. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, let's do one more section over here on the bottom. Thank you guys for the thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Helps my channel a lot. Alright, I think we got it pretty much Plenty of snow. All right, I think that's good enough because we're going to do a lot of covering over here. So we're done with that. So there you go. Now, when you put it in your envelope, it it's it's kind of foam. I mean, you know, it's like uh, I don't even know how to. It's just foamy. So I mean, it might smash if you you know squish it in there if, if you were to put a, but there's going to be so much stuff on here that this is a little higher than the rest because I have a lot of snow behind here before I kind of decided where I was going to put everything so keep that in mind all right so now think about where you want to put this um let's do our sentiment and I would recommend make sure you put your lid on tight and then also put it back in the bag because it just tends to 
keep it fresh, just like the paste when I tell you put a Ziploc over it and then seal it up. Okay, so now what I did with this is I took the um, postage, the rectangular postage, okay, and I'm going to cut it. That's a little bit too thin. So go through and cut it and make it to the left. Okay, get it all the way to the left, right about where you want it. Give it just that right amount of space there on the left. Now what you're going to do is you're going to get a post-it note. You're going to put the sticky side up and put your post-it note like that. So it's going to stick, you know, pretty good in the middle there. And now what you're going to do is you're going to put it back through. See, most of the time you would probably put it through here, but it's easier if you put it back in, move it over and look at your, like the little teeth here on the side of your rectangle or whatever, you know, image you're using and align those back up. So align them back up and then press. Okay, so there you go. You just cut everything and now you can pull your sentiment off and it's smaller. I didn't want to use an oval or anything like that. I didn't want anything to take up a whole lot of space. And so I decided I was going to do this and just make it a little smaller. Okay, now you have snow there. So you don't have anything here or here. So you're going to do that with your dimensionals. So we're going to add our sentiment first so we know where it's going to stay, where you can put everything else in there. So we need one here and one down here. Okay. The next thing what I did is I added glue. So the glue is going to adhere to the puff paint. I just kind of did just like that. Okay. And we're going to put it right across. I'm going to leave just enough room on the side and the bottom. And we're going to add our dimensionals. We're going to push those down and then that has glue. It'll just hold in the middle. Just in case your puff paint is too high right there, you definitely want to make sure that it's going to adhere to your project. Now we can think about where our branch is going to be. And I like the branch to kind of come over the sentiment, like to make it all a focus point. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in our edges again. So let's pull in. I cut a lot of them already. Let's pull this one in. Oh, these are in pieces, but that's okay. And I use my older scissors and I go right below the V so you, that you could use that part also. All right. And we're going to take our tree. We're going to take the mini dimensionals and we're going to put them towards the bottom where the branches are and there's snow right there but that's okay just stick it right on top it'll be fine and that one right there blue snow i've seen yellow snow but yeah, I guess there is blue snow too, like a tint of blue, like snowflakes. All right, so I'm just gonna do little ones all the way up. I'm gonna take this little piece right here because we don't know what's touching where. Um, and I think we're pretty good the whole way missing snow. So I'm gonna put this right here just to give it that little extra piece. It's really thin right there. We're going to take this. You notice I left the end off because we're going to do a little bit of trimming right there. Okay. All right. So now bring this in. I'm going to remember the snow's on the top part of the branch. I'm going to put this right here just to kind of lay right in and it's adhered on there really well. Okay, and now um, this really doesn't come off, but I'm gonna I'm going to cut this 
So it goes right along the top panel there. And you don't have to, but I'm keeping my image inside that panel. All right, so there's that. And I'm gonna put another dimensional under there because my branch seems like it's pushing it down a little bit. I'm just gonna put a little mini dimensional right there. Just tuck that in and now it's lifted up a little bit better. Okay, now you just have to figure out your leaves and your bird. So we'll do, just set your bird there. He's gonna go right on the snow. And I liked my sentiment down here. I thought about it up here, but I wanted to see the sky with the stars and everything in the background there. So that's why I chose to put it on the bottom. And I think I'm gonna change my leaves up a little bit. I think I'm gonna put one there and then we have these two to go right here but we could also put them behind the branch and make the branch kind of more of a focal so it's whatever you want so i'm going to do this one first because i know i like that one there and i'm going to pull in my dimensional there and I'm gonna put this one just like right here. So just right at the edge. So it kind of pokes out there. And then I think I'm gonna put maybe I'll put this one up here. Kind of break up the different leaves. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'm going to put another dimensional. I think I'm going to put just one because it's going to go right on that background there. Right there. I want it to kind of, I want to see the point. I want to see the leaf. So we'll put that there. And then this one, I think we'll just put right here. So we're going to put a dimensional towards the tip and let's see. And I'm going to put a little one towards the top up here, right here. And again, this is where I'm going to bring my glue in. I'm going to put just a little bit right here. We don't know what it's going to touch, but I'd rather If my bird's going to be right about there, I'm going to bring that in right here. Okay, so this dimensional is touching here, but there's a little bit of space. So I'm going to take another little dimensional, if I can get it, and I'm going to put it right on the bottom of that other one. So now it does touch the back paper. Okay, so there are my leaves. There's my bird. And I'm just putting dimensionals all over for him. There's snow right there in the middle. So we're gonna go all around that. So let's put dimensionals all around. I want a little piece of dimensional, so I still have this little piece that I cut. Let me move all my trash. So I'm going to bring in my little piece. I'm going to pull off the back. We're going to put a little piece on the tail. We don't know where that's going to land exactly over here on the branch. And then I want a little tiny piece to go on the foot. Okay. And then I think I'm gonna take a small dimensional and put it right here. Because we know the middle and now I took that off, we're just gonna add that there. Save it. Now before I take the dimensionals off, I'm just gonna kinda, yeah, it feels like it's gonna lay nicely. So we're gonna take it off.
Hi, Pamela. How are you? No worries. Okay, so here's our little bird. Let's put him right, right about there. And you can kind of tell with your dimensionals, kind of feel where you want. So I didn't put one there because there's snow there. And I could have put glue, but I have enough dimensionals that he's going to he's gonna fit on there just fine. Now, before I put my bird on there, duh, let's see if I can take them off carefully. Okay, we're going to leave them. We're going to take a post-it note. No, this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a post-it note. I don't have my masking stuff out right now. I'm going to take the sticky stuff. I much prefer my masking, but for now, we're just going to use this. And I'm going to die cut because, again, I forgot. I want to add Wink of Stella, but I really don't want it on my bird because sometimes Wink of Stella gets crazy. And if I'm using it with blends, um, I don't want it to to make any movement. So I make, there's a little tiny bit of sticky right there, but we're just gonna lay that down anyway, right? Just like that. If it gets a tiny bit on it, I'm not too worried about that. But let's put that there. Let's get our Wink of Stella. Again, I use my silicone mat. Ugh. All right, and then I squeeze some out and I just kind of do this and then I just tap. I want it to be kind of snow, kind of just add some glimmer. I like the big dots and then down here it can be lighter. And then you can also take your um, your tool here and do a little bit more. I definitely want, yeah, like spots on my leaves. And it just adds okay there we go it's easier if you're doing that with multiple cards because you don't waste all that stuff but okay I'm gonna flip this over get rid of my sparkle it went through that's okay and now we'll just peel this off our bird. Ta-da! Now, I didn't feel the need to add any embellishments or, you know, like any stones or anything like that because um, it had just so much going on with everything. And it does drive really fast. I love it. I love Wink of Stella. And so, um, anyway, so there's kind of how I did my bird. You can see we did speckle this one up a little bit more. I probably blended that one a little extra, but I actually really like the speckles. And um, he just looks so cute. And so I was asked to use the um, Perched in a Tree. And I didn't think this would be a good bingo card because it would take a lot. So I decided to um, do it as a video. Uh, oh, do I wish I could make a card as beautiful? Oh, Debbie, you definitely can. <laughs> Debbie, you make beautiful cards. Do not doubt yourself. So there we go. That is our card for today. So there may be a little better close up to it here. And you can see the sentiment pokes out just a little bit because of the snow, but it's okay. So you can see some glimmer on there, the snow, very little blue snow. Just, um, you can always layer just a little more on it and then it's, um, it'll be white. So I did the branch, kind of like this, the branch and the bird are a little bit more, you know, closer and more focused. This one, I just did the leaves a little bit different. But the birds look just a little different. This one, he's this one, he's sitting up a little more. This one looks like he's about to take off. So it's whatever, you know, it's 
whatever you want. The coloring, just keep going until you kind of figure it out. Stamp a couple, a couple of the birds. Try different colors. See what you like, what works for you. Um, there's just so many things you can do, so many different ways. And um, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And the more you practice, the better you are. I haven't taken any coloring classes. I've just kind of played and tried to come out with things I've learned along the way, like the polka dots, you know, doing the little dots gives them a little more um, dimension. Like I said, you could do the little flicking on it and make little feathery kind of marks and you'll, you'll see what that's about and, you know, look a little feathery. That takes a long time too, um, but... Oh, Debbie, you have a nice night. No one's putting up with you. <laughs> Silly lady. Um, so that is uh, how I created the card. And, and when I saw that dark sky, that dark, um, this dark paper, I thought it would be kind of fun uh, for a Halloween evening card. But I thought it would be perfect for this card, too. So um, just a reminder again, bingo is October the 12th. I'd love for you to join us. It is my birthday month. I will be doing some extra things that evening, um, some giveaways, maybe some raffles. And that will be only for those that are participating in the bingo. So hopefully you'll do that. Uh, don't forget that tomorrow is the 24 hour stamp sale. Um, one of the things to remember is if you want a bundle, purchase it as a bundle because you will get a better discount because you'll get the discount from the stamps and the dies together versus just the stamp set being on sale. So if you want a stamp set, that will be on sale separately, but the dies would not be. So if it's a bundle, buy them as a bundle. And if they're not, then buy the stamp set and the dies separate and your stamp set will be on sale anything from the main annual catalog. Um, as far as the holiday catalog goes, um, get what you can while you can. Um, I know it's just September, things are gonna be around for a while, but uh, eventually things are gonna start um, disappearing towards the end of the year. So just make sure you get what you want. What date is Marcy's birthday? Olivia, is Olivia on here tonight? I didn't see her. Um, it's the 28th, Debbie. I'm almost a Halloween baby, but not quite. Um, I celebrate the whole month, though. That's just how it is. So you'll, you never know what might pop up during October. So make sure you come back and check with me. I do videos on Wednesday nights at 530 and Sundays at 6. Um, bingo night is at 5. I like to move it a little earlier because it's usually a long video. Um, what else? I think that about it. There's a lot of specials going on. Don't miss out on checking those out. The weekly deals, this is what's coming up tomorrow. Today in America, you can purchase these and last week's. Um, tonight only, it will switch tomorrow. The masking paper is amazing. Had I had it on hand right here, I would have uh, shown you that. Um, what else do I love? The faux glass shapes. Love it. Love it with the ocean front, um, card kit and the pearlized enamel effects. You can make your own, um, dots, which are really nice. And I'm trying to look, of course, the evening evergreen, any of that, um, the weave ribbon. I absolutely love the scallop box is adorable. And the Eden dies. I mean, everything is so wonderful. In the lovely layered vellum, in the back of that vellum, there is a stack, and I don't remember how many, I don't know why 40 pops out of my head, but it's a stack of just plain vellum. Um, so it's really nice because it's already cut. Uh, Mary's Sisters is the 27th. Pam, it's the 28th, if you didn't hear. Oh, thank you, Dana. Um, thanks, Lisa. All right, everybody, have a wonderful evening. I will see you on Sunday at 6 o'clock. Have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you soon. Bye, everybody.